What is your childhood memory that you thought was normal but realized it was traumatic later in your life? Before we start with the first story, please hit a subscribe and ring the notification bell to stay updated with us. Story 1. As a kid, I used to brag about being able to sleep for over 24 hours straight to friends or teachers or really whoever would listen. I was mid-sentence mentioning it as a freshman in college when I realized my divorced father was drugging preschool me with cold meds so I'd sleep through his weekends of custody with me. It really f***ed up my sense of reality for a while. Story 2. My older sister used to play our Disney read-along tapes to my younger brother and I, whilst guiding us through the words in the books, she taught us to read this way. I didn't realize till years later that she was using the tapes to cover the sound of our parents fighting downstairs. It saddens me that she never got to have a childhood. Story 3. My father and I had a game when I was a child, helped daddy remember what hospital he went to last. My father was mentally ill, and would hurt himself purposely to get more anxiety, antipsychotic, and pain drugs. There were five hospitals within a two-hour drive of us and in those days, early 90s, late 80s, there were no computer systems to track him like there is now. He would literally break his own fingers, burn himself with oil, anything to get what he needed. And it was my job to help him remember, so he wouldn't get caught. After he took his life when I was 12, I had a lot of feelings and scary memories to deal with. It's been a long, hard road, but I hope wherever his is, has not in pain anymore. Story 4. My mom leaving me at different places with different people for months at a time. Or when we would be driving I remember there would be times where she would tell me about the school she was going to take me. To and that I would live there. I remember her describing the horses they had, lies, and how much I would love it. She never ended up taking me there but would always talk about it like it was some magical place. Found out from my uncle years later it was an orphanage. Only reason she didn't end up taking me is because he threatened to kill her if she did. Story 5. My stepdad would frequently play fight me and my sister when my mom wasn't home, but his play fighting was actual abuse. Most of the abuse was punching and stuff, but the worst one I remember was him tying me to a chair with a ton of duct tape and tying my mouth and just leaving me there for over an hour. Story 6. This question reminds me of that Redditor whose mom made him have a butt plug in at all times in fear of the devil doing butt stuff or something. The mom got busted when he had to use the bathroom during school and asked the teacher to help remove his poop plug or whatever he called it as a kid. Was truly a f***ed up story in a similar Ask Reddit thread. Story 7. When I was in the second grade my older sister came into the bathroom while I was taking a bath to play with my toys with me. I didn't find out until later it was because my father was having a stroke from drinking too much and was making sure I didn't finish taking a bath before the paramedics arrived. Story 8. When I was in kindergarten they would make us kneel in a corner on some wood piece or s in t that was utterly painful for every time we hurt each other or cursed, which happened a lot apparently, and as soon as I got to elementary school I asked the teacher the first time I was in trouble where I should go kneel. They took attention to that and long story short they called the police on our old kindergarten, and it's now closed since 2006. Edit, to clarify a few questions. This took actually place in eastern Bavaria in the early 2000s. It was a Catholic kindergarten, and all of this was considered rather normal inside its walls. Story 9. When I was about 10, my mother had to leave the country for work for almost a year, so she left me to live with her longtime boyfriend. Every night he'd come home drunk, which I thought was hilarious. He'd come into my room and sit on my bed touching me, especially on the butt and tell me how much I look like my mother and try to pull my sheets off. I'd just pretend to sleep. I got annoyed that he kept waking me up so I started locking my door at night. The f***er broke off the lock and kept doing it. He also once threw a plate at me, he missed, for giggling at lunch. I never thought of telling my mum about this because I thought it was normal. Story 10 When I was young I was really good friends with a girl whose grandparents lived across the street, and we got along really well and would hang out all the time. At some points, I was maybe four or five at the time. She invited me to her uncle's house, and they had a big above ground pool built into their deck, and we went swimming. Eventually we got out but we both wanted to get back in, and the uncle said if we wanted to go back into the pool we had to skinny dip. Again, we were both no older than five. But we did. It took a long time for me to realize the severity of the situation, the implications, e tick. Half of me feels like it was harmless. Half of me is like, damn, who the f*** does that? 
story 11. In middle school, I started getting a lot of stomach aches due to undiagnosed acid reflux. I was also a really anxious kid, so I feared I was going to throw up a lot. Thus, almost every night I'd take half a Tums. When I offhandedly told my best friend, she looked terrified. I think you might be addicted to Tums, she said. We had just learned about addiction, and I told her I didn't feel withdrawal without the medicine, and that I was just taking it as prescribed. She still seemed unconvinced, so I told her she was being silly and dropped it. In high school, I learned her brother's drug addiction had been tearing the family apart, and she was probably terrified one of her closest friends was using too. Story 12. When I was... Till I was about 10, the school ELS teacher would sometimes pull me out of recess to sit down with me and play weird games. I hated it because it meant I wasn't outside writing my stories, and besides, I was a native English speaker. Why did I ever need to do anything with the ELS teacher? Yeah, it turns out she was the counselor, and she was trying to get enough information to show that I had signs of autism at a learning disorder to give to the National Health Service and get me an actual psychologist because my parents were refusing to send me to one. Unfortunately, her husband died before she could finish, and I didn't end up going to one until I was 17, when I was legally allowed to do that sort of thing on my own. Edit. Because some of you are a tad confused. Yes, I did actually have ad. The oh shit that was so much worse than I thought it was isn't the ELS thing. It's the fact that the teacher had to play in perpetu psychologist because my parents refused to take me to an actual psychologist despite having every ability and reason to do so. Which is considered negligence and is technically abuse of some sort. Story 13. When I was around eight, my best friend at the time used to steal bad food from her pantry and we'd go into her room and she'd then explain to me how we had to be skinny because being skinny meant boys would like us and so she would then meticulously read the backs of the cookie packs and count out every cookie and how many calories they were for each of us she also was obsessed with shaving all her body and would try and pressure me into shaving my legs and arms once again boys liked it when you were hairless i never really grasped how bizarre it was for eight-year-olds to count calories and be hairless for boys Years later, my primary school had a national scandal where 10 to 12 year olds were sexually abusing each other on the mat during class, at lunchtime and well any opportunity they had. I can remember lots of peer pressure for kids to finger each other and make out because that meant you were cool and liked by the hot boys. I was very fortunate to not be involved and looking back it honestly so f***ed up. Don't know if any of it was related but just from 7 to 12 it was quite gross. Story 14 my mother used to let me skip school a lot to take me to the hospital to see my older sister. We'd have hospital camp outs where I'd sleep in the hospital bed with my sister, and she'd sleep in the recliner chair provided for parents. It's now that I realize she'd do that because everyone, doctors, child psychiatrists, social workers, even friends and family, told her she needed to give me as much good memories with my sister as possible before she died. Surprisingly, that's not the traumatic memory. On those hospital camp outs, she used to make me memorize a nursery rhyme. She'd sing it to me, then make me sing it back to her over and over. It was to the tune of Hickory Dickory Clock, because I used to watch play school a lot. So it was one I loved but one that wouldn't come up in school, so there was no risk of teachers asking us to play. It on recorders then wondering why I was singing the wrong lyrics. She drilled it into my head so heavily that I still remember the lyrics. The first verse was about my dad that he was abusive, and that I couldn't be placed with him. The second verse was about my godmother, her name and her phone number, that she had documents to prove the abuse, and that she will take me in. I realize now that my father was severely abusive to my mother, and my mother was constantly trying to prepare me in case he killed her. Whether it looked like an accident or not, she needed me to be able to tell the police officers that he was abusive, that my godmother's number is XYZ, that she has evidence and will take me in, I learned the nursery rhyme when I was four. I guess it was the only way she could ensure a four-year-old would memorize information like that. Story 15. Every time my dad would pick me up from school he'd leave me in the car for three plus hours whilst he went into the local pub and got drunk. Nothing to do. Just sitting there in the car. He'd come back after the few hours had passed and throw me a bag of chips as he started the car. I always thought I was the luckiest boy in the world to be getting those chips. Edit. The response to this has been beyond overwhelming. Even when I wrote this I didn't think is was half as big a deal as I have come to realize from this post. 
Thank you so much to all those who shared stories and sympathies. The world has some nasty people, but god damn does it have some beautiful people too. One of the things that makes Reddit great is that there are so many of the latter to be found. Thank you. For those of you who shared similar stories, I hope you find a little peace out of realizing how many of us there are. I sure do. Finally, if those of you in my boat feel inadequate, suffer from imposter syndrome, compulsive need to apologize and make right, shame for resenting your dad in spite of knowing he did some shitty things, anxiety, shame, or a host of other little ever-present storm clouds, just know you're not alone. This thread has helped me realize where many of these issues have come from. I hope you all get past it and use the memory of it as a tool to do right with your kids one day. Be happy. You're worth the space occupy. Alright folks, that's a wrap. If you like more of this please hit a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. You can also share your thoughts in the comment below. I'll see you in the next video.